Yo, what up, what up, what up, and welcome back to Pinoy News, man. How y'all doing, man? Look, I'm, yo, look, real shit. You see the fucking puppet? Yo, it's fucking gangster, ain't it? Like, real shit, that motherfucking shit is goddamn gangster. Like, yo, y'all be mad all you want to, but it is what it is. And say, hey, it all you want, but you will never win it. Well, it took you five nights to write, I write in five minutes. Like, yo, look. But real shit, man, we got like a little bit of a video right here today from a new Peter, Peter Zihan joint. You know what I'm saying? Actually, I have not heard this yet. But I wanted to cut a video and see how the fuck it looked. You know what I mean? In the meantime, y'all know the deal. Let's just check this out. So we came up with free trade and globalization. Uh, the idea that the American Navy would patrol the oceans for everyone so that anyone could go anywhere at any time and interact with any partner in any supply chain uh, and export goods for hard currency. We bribed up, up an alliance. We paid people to be on our side. And it worked. And then the war ended in 1989, and we never updated our strategy. So globalization has kind of been on autopilot for these past 30 years. And the Americans have lost interest. The strategic environment that gave birth to it is gone. And we've now elected three populist leaders in a row that have absolutely no interest in anything international unless it's bringing jobs back. Biden is saying a lot of the right things for globalists, but he says he wants to do everything with no money and no troops, which is, you know, not how maintaining the global system works. So that's kind of piece one. The Americans are done. We've already withdrawn our troops. We don't have the capacity to patrol the oceans anymore. Peace two comes from peace one, because when you inject global peace into the system and allow everyone to trade, incomes rise. And when incomes rise, people move off the farm and into cities. And when they do that, they stop having kids. And you do that for 70 years, and you have birth rate collapses in not just the rich world, but in the developing world as well. Yo, and I'll be real with you, man. Like, yo, this is, this is something that we have, like, yo, this is one of the reasons why we have all this inflation in the system, why, like, shipping's all expensive and ridiculous and retarded and whatnot. Like, it's because of the fact that, like, yo, individuals don't want to end up leaving their homes and leaving their, you know what I mean, leaving their families and leave whatever it is to go on, you know what I mean, like go and sail across the oceans, you know, or do all these type of things. Like people don't do this. And you add to that, you know what I'm saying, the rising cost of living, you know what I mean, with most of these places, you're going to end up having massive amounts of fucking inflation inside of the system as a whole. And especially after you have Corona Chan, you know what I mean, for like a year and a half now. Like, that's just how this operates. And by the way, they warming up part two. You know what I mean? Like, legit, they got, like, this avian flu coming out of China, but they just had, like, you know what I mean, two cases or whatever over there. That's something that we might want to be paying attention to because they might be trying to do this dumb shit the fuck again on some nonsense. Like, yo, real shit, if the news gets a hold of this, you know what I mean? And, like, yo, they start turning it into, oh, man, what about the children's on some bullshit? Like, yo, we're going to end up having some major fucking problems as a whole. The first half of this decade was always going to be the decade that the developing world writ large aged into mass retirement. And it was, the second half of this decade was always going to be the decade when the developing world ages out of having sufficient young people to work and consume. So this was always the last decade of this system, regardless of what the United States did. And then coronavirus came along and just said, you know what, it's actually going to be this year. So we're past peak consumption. We are past peak investment. We are past peak production. Most of the world will never go back to where we were in January of last year. Yeah. The question is, how do we manage this transition from what we've all known our entire professional lives to this terrifying new amorphous deglobalized world where no one's holding up the ceiling? For example, if you're looking at kind of tier one. Well, like, yo, let's, let, let's go over that real quick. You know what I'm saying? Because this is important. Like, legitimately, this is something that I feel is kind of really important that we don't have enough of a conversation about when it comes to, when it really comes to it. Like, we're not having a conversation about what we do in a post-growth, post-consumption world. Like, we're not having this conversation with our basic, you know what I mean, people. We're not telling individuals, like, hey, no one's having kids. So, like, yo, we can't keep living in the manner in which we were living. You know what I mean? Like, yo... We're having problems where individuals don't want to go back to work. And, yeah, part of it is the fact that there's unemployment and shit, right? But part of it's just the fact that individuals don't want to work for these bullshit-ass wages. And they've had the opportunity to stand here and, you know, make a better living, right? Like, everybody's kind of moving up the value-added ladder as far as, you know, I mean, where it's concerned. And there's not enough young people to do these jobs. 
And we've stood here and made all these laws that say, hey, look, you know, a 16-year-old can't work at McDonald's anymore without paperwork. You know, I mean, he has to go to the school and get signed in and all this nonsense. And, like, fucking his parents got to sign this bullshit. And it's all types of fucking retarded garbage in the end of the day, right? So what do we do? You know what I mean? Like, yo, we need to deregulate a lot of things. We need to start having conversations about, hey, look, you know, maybe you might be better off at 16 earning six or $700 a week working at McDonald's than you would be going to school in the end of the day, right? Because you can always read at home. You can always learn shit later, as I have, as a lot of us are now. And I mean, that's what we're doing at the moment. Like, I'm a GED motherfucker. I dropped out in 11th grade, right? You know what I mean? Like, yo, you, it doesn't mean you can't keep learning. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean you can't keep becoming a better individual in the end of the day. And I mean, that just is what the fuck it is. Let's keep rocking, though. In countries, uh, Korea, Japan, Germany, Italy, you know, they passed the no point of no return in their demographics in the late 80s. Hmm. And so we've just been waiting for the end, and now the end is here. And the second tier countries, uh, Canada has kind of pushed things off with mass immigration, Spain with mass immigration, Brits with mass immigration. You can kind of see a common theme here. They've got at least another 10 or 15 years, but they're on the same trajectory. And then the tier three countries, the United States, Mexico, uh, we've managed to keep our birth rates up. So we get this split in the world where the populations that are more sustainable, where reproduction is still possible, uh, kind of lurch into this new world with a lot of the tools of the old. Uh, for them, reinventing the wheel is not necessary to be done right now. And the tier three countries can look at the tier one countries and watch how they grapple with the changes and hopefully learn a few things. Well, if you look at a map of the world, the East Asian rim from, uh, from the Sea of Japan going down roughly to the Southern Philippines, you know, so you're picking up the Northeast Asian four, Japan, Korea, uh, Taiwan, China, the Persian Gulf, of course, and then a belt in Central Europe uh, from Scandinavia and, and Moscow straight down to uh, Turkey. Those three zones, historically speaking, have been the most violent areas of the world uh, since the beginning of recorded history. Uh, just a quirk of geography, this is where the world's major cultural and economic regions kind of come together and clash. What the global order under American leadership did is stop that. We, we forced everyone to be on the same side. And so for 70 years, we have not had the clash of civilizations. Instead, we've had global growth and integration, which, you know, if you wanted to integrate before 1945, it meant some European or Japanese uh, dude came over and conquered your country and forcibly assimilated you into whatever they wanted. That's what integration used to look like. That's not what it is today. I mean, we've got container ships <laughs> that have, what, 15,000 containers on them now with products from every country in the world and going to every country in the world. We, we've never been this linked but that requires stability. And the first time a civilian ship, for whatever reason, is you know, challenged by a state navy, that's it, it's over. I mean, you, you raise the marginal cost of transport by like 1%, half of the world's supply chains are no longer viable. So we really are talking a breakdown of everything we know about how we build stuff, how we develop things, how we move things from A to B. It's all interconnected and it's all incredibly fragile. Yo, and that, I, I'll be honest with you, man. That's something that, like, legitimately we don't talk about enough. You know what I mean? Like, is, like, the reasons why we build things in Asia and Japan or in Asia and, you know, Taiwan and whatever the case is, is because it was cheaper, right? Like, it's cheaper than American labor, but only marginally because you got to add in the cost of shipping in the end of the day, right? Like, and I've talked about this before on this channel, how like, you know, these giant companies, like they operate on a, uh, on like a super low margin and shit, right? In the end of the day, they stand here and they, they operate on this margin that's like ridiculously low, right? It's, it's stupid low in the end of the day, right? It's only like one or 2%, right? And that's their margins. And like, they'll, they'll buy a company for like half a percent of gain, you know, half a percent of, you know what I mean? Like, you know, profit or whatever it is. Right. On like a billion dollars. But the thing is, is like if you raise that cost one or two percent, like all that stuff no longer viable and these companies become bankrupt really quickly. That's what happened to Sears and J.C. Penney and all these places. Right. So, you know, I mean, if you raise the cost of shipping, 
You know what I mean? After you've all after we've already raised up, you know what I'm saying? Like I've shown y'all the elephant crap before. After we've already made raised up, you know what I mean, like the value of their labor and whatnot at this point. Like none of this is viable anymore. Right? That means all this international shipping and all this building in other fucking Asian countries and shit, it just don't work. You know what I mean, at the end of the day. So like we need to have a conversation about like what do we do then because I'll be honest, and I've thought about this since, you know, I mean, probably 2004, 2005, is that the Federal Reserve, what the Federal Reserve really does, you know what I'm saying, legitimately, is it hides, you know what I'm saying, the fact that, like, legit, our paper is worthless, right? And if we had to pay an American worker to do the things that Chinese workers did, you'd have a whole lot less stuff. And we'd have to go back to knowing how to fix things, you know what I'm saying, and work on our own shit. And you couldn't just throw away appliances. You'd have to have a repairman. And it would breed a whole new, it would, you know I mean, basically breed an entirely new economy. But it'd be an economy that we've known before because this is the same economy we had before 1950. Like, it is what it is. Let's keep, let's keep rocking, though, man. Finish up, see what he's saying. And without the Americans, none of it is possible. Well, it's kind of like, let's assume you're in a car wreck that involves a train and a cliff. You know, what? which one actually kills you? <laughs> there are any number of ways that this can all go to hell overnight. If I were a betting man, I would say the, yeah. the type of ship that is most likely to hit would probably be an oil tanker. Because uh, uh, that's where the most immediate vulnerability is. Yeah. Uh, but it have to be. You interrupt the flow of energy anywhere for any reason, a really bad hurricane, uh, the Russians move on eastern Ukraine, the Chinese and the Japanese escalate from just yelling at each other to actually you know, pointing some guns at each other and somebody pulls the trigger accidentally. Anything that does any of this, energy prices will at least double in a very short period of time. And when that happens, you got these giant tankers carrying a million plus barrels of crude sailing along at a, a measly 11 uh. miles. Um, countries will act in their own self-interest. And oil is the product that is transport, transported the furthest on average of anything else. And of course, once one of those goes down, the energy markets go down. And you can imagine what that's going to do to everything else. You know, uh. Oil is not just a fuel. It's a fertilizer. It's what we used to make plastics and pretty much everything that you can probably touch in your room right now. Uh, without it, everything stops. And that's just... That's just one bullet. That's just the cliff. <laughs> and you've got the train and you've got the other cars. <laughs> Let's start with obviously the big one that's on everybody's mind, and that's the US and China. The, the escalation so far, how you look at it going forward, and if we can understand the role that Taiwan might play in this, because I think that at the moment is looking more and more like the kind of key piece on the board. Sure. Uh, God, I mean, the, race, the relationship is in free fall right now. And I don't mean to blame Biden or even Xi for that. That This is something that's been coming for a while. Uh, Obama and Trump did the relationship no favors either. Now, that's not me saying that, you know, if we, only we had better leadership in the United States, things would be different, although that would be nice. Uh, what, what I mean by that is this is structural. The Chinese system is utterly dependent upon the global order in its current form as patrolled and maintained by the Americans. So if the Americans really want to destroy China, all they really need to do is go home. Geography will take care of the rest. Well, folks, you know what I'm saying? I figured I'd bring y'all this. You know what I mean? So I don't know what's up with that fat black lady in the background now. You know what I mean? Like, legitimately. But I'll be honest with you. You know what I mean? Like, yo, this is something I wanted to bring to y'all because it's kind of important for everybody hey guys, to understand let me show you as a whole. Right, if you have a meter like this on the side of right? your house and pay $99 per month for power, like you need to take advantage right. of this. You know and I mean? But like, yo, look, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this here is, you know what I'm saying, Geo Pop's channel that I took this video from. Yo, legit, y'all should go sub to him. I'll probably leave a link in the description. Yo, let me know what you think of the puppet, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of digging it. I'll be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? I put a lot of work into this. I probably put like 10, 15 hours of work into fucking putting this motherfucker proper. And I mean, I'm, I'm going to get better at like the backgrounds and things of this nature because I'm not real sure what the fuck I'm doing yet. But like, I thought y'all would like this. Y'all know the deal, man. This is Tom Pease with Pinoy News. 
like, share, and subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you hit that like button on the way to fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Get this fucking shit. Get this shit out of here if you enjoy it. You know what I mean? Drop a comment. Tell me what you think. All right. Holla at y'all later. Peace.